speaking with Dr. Julie Griffin, Judy Griffin, I'm so sorry, and we are covering so many bases and just, in, I'm enjoying this conversation so much. We were talking about how people have to understand that you don't always, you know, that <clears throat> things can come back. And you, you had illustrated that with, with your client who had stopped taking her medication or not medication, but her, her treatments that you had compiled for her and had come out of remission. Because what, what we were talking about also is there's so many stressors to the body, not always the kind that we, um, understand or or aware of and when you have enough stress in your body you will manifest something that is um, particular to your body right and that can you know we you know people understand that viruses can come back they never really go away they hang out along your spine um, but they don't always understand that they have to have to, to manage an illness. If, if you have a broken bone, well, you don't have to nurture it the rest of your life, but it's, you know, that's not the kind of illness we're talking about right now. We're talking about things that can affect you. Even if you don't get sick from it, you still have to pay attention. Yes. Eat a certain way maybe have certain herbal teas or different um, essences or scent in your life. You know, when, you know, there's nothing faster than, than aromas and they can kill you or they can heal you. There's just no two ways about it. Actually and kill you? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're smelling in pollution all the time. Well, that's true. And even if you don't, recognize it because remember the the conscious mind is is alert for you know so many things it, it doesn't always catch everything that yeah you're around it all the time or it's in your water and yeah um because you can smell bad water sometimes but you can smell bad water mm -hmm. and i notice you know the dogs and cats you know that we have as pets they always smell their water and their food. And they, they know us, they love us, but they always smell it to make sure it's right. I've tried that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the knack. I, I imagine at some point in evolution, we did have a much greater um, sense of smell. But, um, yeah, smell can kill you or it can, it can heal you because it goes directly to your brain. Your nose is the only part of your body that's an outgrowth of the brain. The brain is covered everywhere else except to your nose. So when whatever we smell, it goes directly to your brain. And the way smell works is it goes to the limbic part of the brain, which is the older brain and not so much the conscious one at all. But that smell could relax you, it could energize you, it could you know, um, make you feel um, you're having some memories come back, hopefully good ones. And uh, that's all happens in one one hundredth of a second or less. And during that time, every hormone, every function in your body has already got the picture. It's already happening and making changes all the way down on every level. So scent can be very, um, I think it's it's kind of overdone a lot with, with aromatherapy, but it can be it can be that dramatic that it can make that much difference very quickly. Um, doesn't give us nutrition, so we still need those herbs and we still need the good foods and all those other things to, to keep us in a physical state of well-being. Well, you know, the, I was going to comment that 
with the aromatherapies, what works for one definitely does not necessarily work for the other. Yes. I always tell people, if your nose, your nose knows, and if you don't like the smell, do not use it. What? And I have an issue because so many people love patchouli. Oh, And yeah. I can't use it. It makes me ill. Well, and I've heard so, that so. about other other um, uh, plant. Uh, with, with essences, it's very light. But with essential oils, it's very strong. Um, different odors are very strong. And um, so you really get a hit with that. Yes. I've grown yes. patchouli, and it doesn't bother me. Um, but the smell of the essential oil is really potent. And I know people who mention cloves or wintergreen or, you know, I mean, it could be a, a, a cooking spice that they just can't stand the smell of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's... I always thought that I was just weird because everybody seemed to love patchouli. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, yeah. no, don't even stand by me if you have that on. You know, the yeah. only way I've really seen patchouli work amazingly, and don't try this because you don't do well with it, but I got the tiniest little drop of patchouli and added it to um, some milliliters of, of true rose oil. Keep in mind that a lot of the scent out there and so-called essential oils are synthetics or mixed or whatever. Um, and they all say they're organic and natural. That just means it came from a plant. Right. So I mixed it with some rose and, you know, I made it right from my garden, some rose oil. And, oh, my gosh, it made every, you just felt like every petal was opening and you could smell deeper and deeper and deeper of the rose. Fortunately, I didn't smell the patchouli at all. <laughs> Just... <laughs> well, that would be worth doing. I mean, because yeah, rose it's... is, and roses like me, they'll grow. <clears throat> I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I had somebody come and they were clearing out an area for me that I couldn't get to. And I had a trellis that had broken. I said, don't tear down the roses. Yeah. I've got a new trellis. Just don't tear the roses down. Well, yeah. they did. They cleared out weird stuff and left weirder. But oh. the next year, well, it wasn't even a year, I had roses again that needed a trellis. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank you so much. Because yeah. it just makes my heart sing. I um, always, I shouldn't say this on the air, but I always thought that, I mean, one time this guy gave me a rose plant and um, I, I was single. I don't know that I was available for, you know, I was, I'm busy, you know, I'm that kind of person. <laughs> but, but, you know, he was like acting like he was interested. He gives me a rose plant and, and I said something about, do you want me to plant it for you in your yard or, or you know, why would he give me a rose and not have it in his yard? And he said, oh, I don't like roses. <laughs> I had nothing to do with him. It's like, that does it right well, there. He just kicked himself to the curb. No, <laughs> babies and roses. I mean, everybody should love them, but you never right. know. And baby's breath. Roses don't smell good to everybody. They just don't. Well, I don't think everything does. I mean, we all have different olfactory senses mm -hmm. and sensors. So that's one thing that, well, actually, almost everything is is very individual. I always had a problem with scent and still in, until I started distilling. And I'm, I'm distilling not to necessarily make a lot of essential oil, but for the essences and other things, but you get some of everything. And I found that I could handle that. And so I deducted that a lot of the scent I was reacting to, even though they said it was natural, it, it wasn't. Or it's the stuff like you walk into a retail store and they knock you off their, your feet mm -hmm. with some kind of perfume because those are all chemicals. 
Yes. So it, it can be something like that too. Well, I learned back in the early 80s that not everything smells fantastic on you just because you liked it on someone else. Oh, yeah, just like the dress that you look at in, in the catalog or online, and it looks great, and you get it home and think, Why? <laughs> what was I thinking? This is not the quote clothes for me. Exactly. So, Same thing with the perfumes. I know a lady that, and she said, gee, I'd love to get some of your rose, but it smells terrible on me. I was like, Really? And she said, yeah, when I put rose on, and I've tried many different kinds, and she said, it does not smell good on me. So there you go. It's, it's all chemistry of some sort. What's interesting to me, Kat, is that the human genome, and don't let me get on this too far. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we, have, we don't have a big, a chicken has more variety of genes than the human, human being. Meaning that you and I are more related than we think, and we're more alike than we might think. But here we've got all this bio-individuality, and it fascinates me. It's like, wow, we just don't have that many genes, and we still have this much diversity in the human nature. Exactly. And, you know, that, is a, that brings an interesting point up, which is that they just, this past week, I was listening to someone that they have scientists have come up and decided that we actually do come from two people that everyone on the planet originated with these two people. And I'm like, really? Cause I've heard that before. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? And it just was interesting because if you, if you come from that point, then, of course, we're not going to have a broad genetic field because it's just variations, deviations from the original strands. It's like when you get older and you look in the mirror and you look like your mother. Yes. Oh, I thought, I thought of that one. <laughs> <laughs> one thing we didn't bring up that might be interesting is... Have you ever been um, either with foods or herbs or, or aromas, essences that, you know, for the longest time, it was just the catch me out. It just worked great. And then you, I guess you just grow out of it or something. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work for you in the same way again. So I've, I've seen a lot of that happen. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, I used you know, to like cloying perfumes like Red Door by Elizabeth Arden, which is a lovely cologne, but it's not my color Kool-Aid any longer. <laughs> and now, if I'm going to wear a, a perfume, I have one that I wear because it works. It's the one. Yeah. It's the one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very I... narrow focused. When I find something I like, I stick with it. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. Good idea. It's just like certain certain colors; they just work for you, and that mm -hmm. it's it's all part of the same therapy. It's interesting to see medical all of a sudden come alive to those kind of things. <laughs> You're going really well. Even the blind squirrel will find a nut every so often, right? Yeah. Well, they always think I'm the nut. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're who they're catching up to, so there you go. But, you know, I am I am having so much fun, and we are almost to our top of the hour break. But when we come back, I would like to, I would like to talk about your farm, your garden, not your farm. And I'd like to talk about your laboratory. And I'd like to talk about the fact that Baylor University was utilizing your materials for testing and how some of that went. Are you game for that? Sure. Awesome. And then, of course, to get into even more about the sense and stuff. But we will be back. This is going to be a little five-minute newscast and good time to stretch your legs, do a few cartwheels if you're feeling a little stiff, and, of course, refill those beverages. 
We'll be back in five. NPR podcasts are now. A-